day forecast for Friday, August 30th. So we have the moon in Cancer energy moving out of her rulership at 11.25 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. The moon is going to go void, of course, at that time where things are shaky, things are uncertain, things are unstable, but we're locking into Leo energy at 1.10 p.m. So not a huge window for that instability, for that confusion to take over. The moon moving into Leo energy is going to be a throwback to a lot of the life lessons that we had to learn through Leo season, which of course was getting us in touch with our heart space, with our happiness, with our joy, with our want, need, and desire to pivot and start creating the realm and reality that not only looks good, but that feels good to our soul, to our spirit. We're definitely going to have a change in mood, a change in attitude. We always do when the moon is leaving her rulership in Cancer energy because we're pivoting out of the reflection back the attachments that we have to the past the realization that we are essentially blocking our own damn selves and the leo energy triggers boldness a bravery a courage for us to bust out of those restrictions and confines and really start kind of making some courageous moves in a new path in a new direction there are eight different aspects taking place here today. Seven of them are going to involve the moon. The moon, while still in Cancer energy, going to make a positive interaction with Mars. Mars being the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desires, even our anger. Mars is in Gemini energy, again, helping us to plan and strategize where it is that we want to go from here, what we want to build, what we want to create, what we're passionate about, what we're inspired to pursue. Emotionally speaking, this is going to aggressively put us in a situation, a mood and attitude to figure out where it is that we're ready to break free. We're tired of looking back. We're tired of replaying certain situations and circumstances. We aggressively seek new we want to change, we want to transform, and emotionally speaking, we are ready to pivot away from the past and at least come into this present moment. We are going to see a new passion, a new desire unfold where our wants, our needs, our desires are not actually being acknowledged, especially with what will provide us safety and security for our long-term goals. The moon in Cancer then going to sextile, beautiful interaction with Uranus, the Great Awakener, and of course, Uranus is in Taurus energy. So there's a little bit of a resistance to the changes that we know that we need to make. However, this is a sextile. It's a beautiful interaction. And emotionally speaking, we are releasing our fixation on the past, on what could have been. And we are becoming not only anchored into the present moment, but we're actually thinking about some spontaneous, let's call them calculated risks that we could be making to kind of create a different realm, a different reality for ourselves to be experiencing. We are going to receive insight. There is going to be a positive shift in our mood and attitude. We are going to be illuminated to where it is that now we're giving ourselves permission to get out of our way, to make some adjustments. We are in Virgo season. Adjustment is the name of the game, especially where our routines, our relationships, our finances are concerned. The moon is then going to trine beautiful interaction with Neptune, who of course is retrograde in the final degrees of this Pisces energy. This tells us that the moon is at the final degrees of cancer energy. A trine means that we are working with like-minded elements. This is water on water action. And what water does for us is it purifies us. It cleanses us. It helps us to heal our emotional realm, renew our soul and spirit. And because Neptune is involved, remind us what it is that we're fighting for, what it is that we're working towards, what it is that we actually want to do and pursue, what we actually want to build and create. It is at 11.25 a.m. that the moon is going to go void, of course. We sit in that void until 1.10 p.m. when the moon shifts into Leo energy. Four minutes later, we're wasting no time here. Four minutes later, we have the moon 
in Leo energy, directly sitting across from and opposing Pluto. Pluto is the great transformer. He is retrograde in this Aquarius energy. We have the Leo and Aquarius energy sitting across from each other in the Zodiac wheel. The Leo energy reminds us why we're special, what makes us unique, where it is that we're an individual and where it is that we have some unique wants, needs, and desires that now want to be fully expressed through the physical avatar, through the physical form. The Aquarius energy is about the collective, where it is that we are connecting to and alike in comparison to the people, to the world around us. It is essentially where it is that we are a group in the Aquarius energy versus our want, need, and desire to stand out as an individual. So of course, Pluto intensifies everything. And through this very, let's call it tension filled conflict of the inner war, the inner power struggle, if you will, one part of us wanting to kind of dance to the beat of our own drum, the other part very much content, just doing the same old, same old that everybody else is doing. The Plutonian energy is going to intensify our wants, needs, and desires, regardless of whether they fit into societal standards or not. And emotionally speaking, this is going to be a turbulent realization that, again, we have to break away from doing the same old, same old thing, trying to fit in, trying to be loved and accepted by the people, by the world around us and do what we need to do to honor our soul, to honor our spirit. There is going to be a major shift in our mood and our attitude after we take a little bit of a trip down the darker parts of memory lane. The moon is then going to sextile beautiful interaction with Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money, who just shifted into her rulership in Libra energy here yesterday. If you haven't listened to that astro forecast, you should definitely do so. If you haven't busted out your Virgo season e-guide to capture the topics and themes going on as this shift has taken place as well, I'm going to recommend you do that. Emotionally speaking, the moon interacting with Venus is putting us on a very interesting path to figure out that our values, our priorities have changed. Yes, our wants, needs, and desires have changed for relationships, for our long-term goals, for what we need to feel safe and secure within ourselves, within our physical realm. But also, again, the moon in Leo really activating the boldness, the bravery, the courage. Again, Mercury has been retrograde in this Leo energy, reframing matters of the heart. Now there is a full steam, full energy pushing us forward to tweak, again, Libra and energy under the influence of Virgo season, tweak the scales to be tipping now in our favor. This is definitely going to have some heart activations. This is definitely going to put us on the fence. Again, Libra and energy, very indecisive about what we could change, what we could transform in our physical realms to promote a little bit more happiness, more joy, more safety, more security. At the end of the day, we are feeling positive. We are feeling optimistic about what is to come. We are in a much more empowered energy than we have been in quite some time. And this is just helping us to kind of build, cultivate that fire, that spark, that flame that we just discovered throughout Leo season and how we can actually make the changes to our physical realm to mirror back what it is that we've already arrived at in our heart and in our head. The moon is then going to make an awkward interaction with Saturn. So Saturn being the Lord of Karma, he is retrograde in Pisces energy. He rules over roles, responsibilities, system structures, foundations, willpower, and discipline. And he is retrograde in this Pisces energy, again, closing out a 30-year karmic chapter. And this is the deconstruction phase of really challenging the old belief system that we had, what we thought we were capable of, what we thought we were deserving of. We have to shift what we believe in in order for us to adopt a brand new path. Now, a little bit of a reality check comes with Mr. Saturn. Lucky for us, this isn't a harsh aspect as much as it is just an awkward one, but it is going to put forth a new want, need, and desire to start clearing away the gunk, wrapping up those loose ends, closing particular doors on the past in order for, again, the moon and Leo, emotionally speaking, to be bold and brave and courageous enough to start building and creating something new. So this is going to kind to give us a parameter on the foundational structures that need to be examined, adjusted, changed, transformed to set our old self free 
and to anchor in the new version of self with the new wants, needs, and desires. The sun shining a very bright light in Virgo energy is going to make an awkward interaction with Chiron, the wounded healer who is retrograde in Aries energy. So again, the sun in Virgo should be highlighting for us the problematic areas in uh, the run of our day, in our habits, our routines, in our mental plane. We have to focus on the problem in order to fix it, to heal it, to repair it. The Virgo energy is bringing forth a new level of awareness on where it is that certain areas of our life have gotten out of whack, have been crazy and chaotic, and that Virgo energy wants to bring it back into order. But the sun is shining a bright light on ourselves, on this new version of self. Chiron is both the wounded version of self and the healed version of self. And right now we are in this awkward adjustment period where the old is still kind of lingering and the new is still fighting for power. So this may be a time where we get a little bit judgmental, a little bit critical of oneself, because again, the perfectionist energy coming through in Virgo season, very strong. And so we may be picking ourselves apart. We may be breaking ourselves down or beating ourselves up. But this is unfortunately a natural progress in trying to discern what parts of us need to stay, need to go. What parts of our identity are still wounded? What parts of our identity still need some healing? So many of us get caught up in, you know, the wrongdoings in our, let's call it wounded version of self that we don't know who we would be if we healed the wounds that we use as a defense mechanism. And so the sun will be shining very brightly on this new version of self to really kind of break the old parts down and to really help us anchor in the new healed parts and allow that particular version of self to take the lead, to take charge. The last thing that we have going on here today is the moon in this Leo energy, semi-squaring, creating a little bit of tension and conflict with Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, and blessings, who of course is in Gemini energy, kind of pushing the boundaries of our mental plane, really expanding on some of the ideas, expanding on some of the options and opportunities that we were once excited about until our ego self started speaking fear into that excitement and started talking us back into a state of paralysis. What we know is that Jupiter usually brings optimism and confidence, but because this is not the greatest aspect, we're low on confidence. We are low on our self-esteem. We are just not feeling the good vibes that we wish that we would be feeling at this particular juncture. What we can gain from this is a little bit of a life lesson on where it is that we're feeling discouraged, why we're feeling discouraged, what it is that we are excited about, but therefore then the fears, the doubts, the insecurities talk us out of that excitement. This is our ability to emotionally reflect back to Leo season, to see the life lessons that we've learned, to integrate that wisdom and to use that wisdom moving forward to kind of choose the path, the direction that we need to be walking. We may not want to be walking it at this point, but we need to be walking this path to bring certain chapters and endings to a closure, to free the path, to free the way for us to really launch ourselves in a brand new direction that our heart and soul is now leading us to pursue. <laughs> 